All right, I'm gonna talk about two kind of hot button issues and how it kind of interacts with this supply and demand model that we've been working with. So, um, so let's talk about education. Now, one of the things, especially about higher education, one of the big worries is that prices keep going up and up and up. Now, obviously the price of everything has gone up, you know, due to inflation, but um, higher education has outpaced inflation a ton. So it is harder and harder and harder to get a college education. So first, let's figure out why. And second, let's figure out what, if anything, that we can do to solve this issue. Now, um, if prices are increasing, that means one of two things. That either means that demand has increased, because that could lead to an increase in prices, or it could mean that supply has decreased, because that also leads to an increase in prices. So, which one is it? Well, it's very clearly an increase in demand. Let me tell you how I know that. Um, even without knowing a lot of the uh, mechanisms that are causing this, if this is an increase in demand, not only will the price go up, but the quantity will increase. And that's what we've seen in higher education. Not only are prices increasing, but a lot, lot, lot more people are going to college. So um, this has been caused by an increase in demand. Okay. Well, what's caused this increase in demand? Several things. First of all, um, instead of having to pay in cash, okay, you can pay in loans. And um, we are more and more willing to give loans to students to go to college. So this increases the demand. Also, um, more and more jobs are requiring a degree. So that increases demand. Also, colleges have been lowering their entrance requirements, which increases demand. So all of these things have lent themselves to increasing demand. So that brings the, up the question, how do we bring the price down? Okay. Um, now, on the one hand, um, there you can do government programs to basically pay for the college. Unfortunately, that will actually drive the cost up. Now, not the out-of-pocket cost for the, the person going, but the actual cost to society for paying for this, the costs are just going to keep increasing because now you're going to have even more people wanting to go to colleges. So um, how can we bring the actual cost of colleges down? Now, there's two broad ideas, two broad ways that you can do this using kind of our supply and demand diagram. So one way you can do it is by decreasing your demand. Now, if you decrease your demand, this does two things. One, it brings the cost down. And the second thing is it brings the quantity down. Well, what does that mean in terms of college? Well, that means fewer people are going to college. Now, some people will say this is a good thing. Some people will say this is a bad thing. A lot of societies that wind up paying um, for students to go to college, they also have higher entrance requirements. So you don't have a lot of people going to these colleges and then failing out a few years later. Um, you kind of have like the cream of the crop going to these colleges. Um, now, whether or not this is a good solution kind of depends on your, your thought process. If you believe that, you know, we want to make sure more people are going to college, then this is a bad solution to have these higher entrance requirements. Okay. But, um, so that, that could work. Um, also decreasing the amount of student loans. Now this is kind of weird because on the one hand, it makes it harder to get the money to go to college. Um, but it brings down the cost of college because fewer people are going to be attempting to go. So 
a lot of this is kind of undoing what we've been doing over the past several decades. Okay, so that's the demand-based solution, is decreasing demand. And there's, there's a few different ways that you can do that. Now, a second way that we can bring down costs is a supply-based solution. So how do we bring it down with supply? Well, that would be due to an increase in supply. Now, this in a lot of ways can be considered a better solution because um, this would lead to not just lower costs, but also higher quantity. Okay, so you can do this without sacrificing um, having people going to college and getting these skills. Now, this one's a little trickier though, because this has to do with actually bringing down the cost of producing education. Well, how do we do that? Um, well, one way is, you know, hiring fewer teachers, lowering teacher salaries. Turns out that's not a huge portion of the cost of college. Like, um, professors aren't the ones, you know, really taking the lion's share of that, um, those costs. But there are other things that we can do to lower those costs. We can um, build fewer facilities. Um, we can uh, encourage more online education. That's something that's already going on. Now, we start to have questions creep in on, okay, are we getting the same quality of education if we're doing these online classes? And, and that starts to get a little sketchy. Um, but um, there's there's been other ideas um, where, you know, maybe we make things a little less rigid where, you know, um, instead of having these very set courses during these set times, um, it's more like video based and here's these videos and here's these assignments. And instead of having, you know, thousands of teachers, we just have five or six really good teachers that are making these um, videos and sending them, them out. Um, there's different things that, that we're experimenting on to bring down the, the cost of uh, producing this education. Um, so if you're successfully able to do that, um, then that's going to lower the cost and um, lower uh, and increase the number who are able to do this. Now, we can also kind of make similar arguments about something else whose costs have been increasing a lot. Healthcare, okay? Um, so why have healthcare costs been increasing so much? Well, there's a few reasons. Um, so one is back in the day, healthcare was garbage and uh, you pretty much didn't get healthcare because um, there wasn't really much good health care out there. Um, but all of a sudden, there was all this great health care out there and we wanted it. And as we've gotten older, we've wanted more of it. Okay. As we start living longer, we have to spend more on health care. So this is increasing demand. Okay. So more health care at a higher cost. The other thing um, is it has become costlier to provide this healthcare. Um, that comes from uh, the complication of uh, health insurance, having to figure out who gets paid. There's a lot of administrative costs that have nothing to do with doctors or medicine or anything. It's just a bunch of guys sitting around deciding how somebody's going to get paid. Um, so that's actually somewhat decreased supply, which also um, leads to higher prices. So how do we solve this? Okay, well, we can have our demand-based solution. We can have our supply-based solution. Now, a demand-based solution to bring prices down, sorry. Now, this is a little tricky because 
I think a lot of people would argue that this is not really what we want. Um, because not only is it bringing the price down, but it's also meaning that fewer people are getting care. Now, this can be good in cases where people are getting unnecessary tests. So that would be a case of, you know, we're, we're reducing demand for unnecessary tests. That would be a good thing. Um, and other kind of unnecessary care that's going on. Um, in, in that sense, if we reduced demand for that, that would actually be excellent for cost savings. Okay. Um, but um, again, a demand-based solution where we're basically doing it by reducing the amount of care, that may not be the ideal solution for healthcare. We want people to get the care that they need. So perhaps a better solution is a supply-based solution where we do things to um, reduce um, the cost of actually administering the care. So how can we do that? Well, this is a little more challenging. One of the biggest things that um, we want to do is lower administrative costs. Um, that probably means some sort of reform with the healthcare, uh, with the health insurance system, whether that's um, reforming it so that it's easier to figure out who's getting paid, whether that's scrapping the health insurance system and going to a single payer model. Um, there's a lot to be said about how Medicare has much lower administrative costs than, um, than a health insurance based system. Um, but there's other things as well. We, um, there's other places that um, their doctors don't have to spend as much money going to school. Well, what does that do to the supply of doctors? Well, that increases it. Um, and all of a sudden, these doctors aren't having to pay back these massive loans because um, their school was paid for in advance um, by the government. So that's kind of more of a supply-based solution. So um, again, supply and demand kind of peeks its head into um, everything that we talk about. Um, there's a lot of things in advance where if you tell me what happens, I can tell you, well, that's gonna increase demand. So it's gonna increase prices and you're gonna see more of it, whatever it is we're talking about. Um, you give me another situation, I can tell you, oh, well, that's a decrease in supply. So you're going to see Prices go up and you're going to see quantity decrease. So by studying supply and demand, you can kind of um, understand how certain events are going to um, affect prices, affect quantity, uh, basically affect a situation. So uh, I hope this gave you a better view of what we're talking about when we're talking about supply and demand.